Guys, welcome to another video. You've got Mr. Everything English. And in today's video, we will be looking at how you plan an essay on the character of Lady Macbeth. Now, this particular plan can be used across the board for English literature. But the character that we will be using and the play that we will be using is Lady Macbeth from Macbeth. So how is a character of Lady Macbeth presented in the play? Now we know that for this particular question, for any question for English literature, we know that we have a total of 45 minutes. And in 45 minutes, guys, we are aiming to complete four paragraphs. Now these four paragraphs the structure that I always use, guys, is the pretzel paragraph structure. This is the structure that I always use. So we're aiming to do four pretzel paragraphs in 45 minutes, which is roughly 10 minutes per paragraph, because we will leave approximately five minutes to plan and look over and check our work should we need to. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty of the plan, we need to make sure that we know what to put in our exam. So in this question, we have to make sure that we are addressing AO1, AO2, and AO3. Now let's go over each of them. AO1 looks at the quality of your point and the quality of your reference. AO3 looks at your context, which is your background. And AO2 looks at how you analyze language, form, and structure. What that means, guys, is this. That means that somewhere in our essay, we have to address all of this. Now, already you can see every single paragraph has a point and a reference. So I'm hoping these two I will tick off with relative ease. Then it says... We must do all three. If you want anything above a grade seven, guys, you must discuss language, structure, and form. Now, we don't have to discuss all of them in every single paragraph. Like Salt Bay, we sprinkle it over our essay. So, in paragraph one, I advise all of you, in paragraph one, to pick out a language technique and to zoom in to either a noun, a verb, adjective or adverb now the reason we do this is because we make sure that the first paragraph is a paragraph that we can easily get started on that we can easily begin so that is what we do for paragraph number one for paragraph number two we then do the following for our technique we then again pick a language device and we again zoom in to either a noun. However, in this paragraph, we then add our context. Now, where does our context go, guys? Our context goes in between our first effect and before we zoom in. So, so far, we've done language, and we've done context. In paragraph three, what we will talk about is as follows. For our technique, we will pick a structural technique. And for our zooming in, we will zoom into form. Now for this particular text, the form of our text is that it's a play. So we must talk about something like stage directions because these are things that are specific to a play. Now, we've now done form and we've now done structure. What that means is, guys, that if I follow this plan of what I'm doing for each paragraph, by the end of paragraph number three, I've done all my three assessment objectives. I've now talked about language. I've talked about structure. I've talked about form. I've now added context in this paragraph over here. And every single paragraph so far has a point and will have a reference. Which means in paragraph four, I have a little bit more freedom. In paragraph four, guys, I have a little bit more freedom to almost talk about whatever I want, as long as it's within the mark scheme. So, for example, guys, in paragraph number three, 
for my technique, I may pick a language technique. And for my zooming in, I may pick a structural technique. Now, if you want to do context twice, this is where we do our second piece of context. Now, you may be thinking, sir, it's a bit of a plain plan you see in front of you. But guys, this is the structure. We're going to plan it now in detail. But this structure of four paragraphs, in each paragraph, you talk about either language, structure or form. It works perfectly because by sticking to this plan, you take off the entire mark scheme. We have done language device, language device, language device three times, structural device twice and form once. That is perfect for our entire essay because what that does is it gives us the mark for AO2 when it comes to language structure form. Obviously, we have to then go on and explain the effect and that will dictate the quality. Then we have context. Please don't do context in every single paragraph because this is not a history essay. We don't need context in every single paragraph. Doing it once or twice in the entire essay is more than enough. By doing it there and doing it there, we tick the context box. And that is it. Now, if this was a, for example, if this was like a 19th century question or a Shakespeare question, then paragraph one would be on the extract, paragraph two would be on the whole text, paragraph three would be on the extract, and paragraph four would be on the whole text. Now, let's do a real plan. So let's turn this, following this structure, let's plan this question using this particular structure. Now, guys, let's plan four paragraphs on the character of Lady Macbeth. The first thing I will do is I will write down the quotes that I will use. Because by writing down the quotes that I will use, it will give my essay a clear structure. So in paragraph one, I will use the quote, unsex me here. In paragraph two, I will use the quote, flower. Let's just use that part of the quote. Let's not even use the other part. So look like the innocent flower. For paragraph number three, guys, I will use the quote, stage direction, enter, Lady Macbeth with a candle. I will use that stage direction in paragraph number three. And in paragraph four, I will use the quote, out damned spot. I've now got my four quotes, guys. I've now got my four quotes done. Then I must decide what techniques I'm going to be picking out from these quotes. When we are looking at the quote, unsex me here, we will be focusing on this being an imperative. In paragraph two, look like the innocent flower. Here we will be focusing on this being a simile. On paragraph three, enter Lady Macbeth with a candle. Here guys, <coughs> for my technique, I will be using the idea of juxtaposition. And over here guys, out damned spot. I will be using the idea of personification. Then I must decide what am I zooming into. In paragraph one guys, unsex me here. Unsex me here. I will zoom in to the verb unsex because in the first part of the quote I will be talking about the imperative unsex me here. In the second part, look like the innocent flower. I'm going to zoom in to the adjective innocent. For paragraph number three, guys, enter Lady Macbeth with a candle. I will be looking at the form and I will be looking at how this quote is a stage direction and what's the impact of that. And for paragraph number four, person of the out down spot, out down spot. For this one, guys, I will look at how the writer uses the technique of zooming in 
and it's a structural technique and about how they zoom in to the spot. Then I must look at my context, guys. Then I must look at my context. I'm gonna add par I'm gonna add my context, guys. Let's look at look like the innocent flower, out down spot, enter Lady Macbeth with a candle and unsex me here. Alright guys, for look like the innocent flower. For this quote, the context that I will be using is the idea how this goes against patriarchy. That is the context that I will be using here. I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. And then guys, for this particular paragraph here, I will be using Freud and the idea of the super ego. Now, how is Lady Macbeth presented in this quote? Unsex me here. Lady Macbeth, guys, is extremely desperate for power. That is how she is presented in this quote. Next paragraph, look like the innocent flower. Lady Macbeth, guys, is deceptive. She knows how to play the game and she knows what to do. Enter Lady Macbeth with a candle. Ooh, this one, guys, is interesting because for me, Lady Macbeth in this quote comes across as almost looking for an escape. I'll explain what I mean. And the last one, guys, Lady Macbeth is presented as being consumed by guilt. AO1, earlier, if you remember, guys, AO1 was looking at the quality of my point and the quality of my quote. I've got, I've got four good points, which I'll elaborate later, and I have four good quotes. AO2 was looking at if I am able to pick and talk about language, structure, and form. I've got one, two, three, four, five. Yep, I've got language devices. I've got five language devices to be clear. For structure, I've got juxtaposition and zooming in. And for form, I talk about stage directions. So done, I've ticked off AO2. Then we move on to AO3. For AO3, I've got content, I've got patriarchy, and I've got Freud and the superego. Done. I've now, on my plan, ticked off the entire mark scheme. This was the base plan where I decided what I have to include in every single paragraph. And then I turned this base plan into this more specific plan for the character of Lady Macbeth. Now, there are a few things, guys, that I would like to speak about when it comes to my plan. Number one, I did it in a particular order. First thing I did was I got my quotes down. The reason I did my quotes first is because everything depends upon what quotes I choose. If I can't think of any quotes or if my quotes are not decent, then the entire wider paragraph falls apart. Now, the way I know if my quote is good is what I did next. And what did I do next? I picked out a technique. For the first one, I picked an imperative. For the second one, I picked a simile. For the third one, I picked juxtaposition. And for the fourth one, I picked personification. Then I picked out what I'm going to zoom into. Over here, I chose the verb unsex. Over here, I chose the adjective innocent. Over here, I chose the form stage direction. And over here, I chose the fact that I'm going to zoom in. Now, let me explain to you why I chose these, because it's very important. Normally, in my plan, I wouldn't explain the effect. I would just do this and I would start writing. But because I want you guys to know exactly why I chose what I chose, let's begin. In paragraph one, I said that this character is desperate for power. And the desperation comes across because she's begging the imperative. She's begging, guys. She's commanding, please, I beg you, come on and sex me here. She's talking to spirits. And that is the imperative. And the imperative here shows her weakness. Because rather than it being a command of power, it's a begging bold sign of weakness. Then I looked at the verb unsex. 
because it shows the length she's willing to go to get power. She's willing to reduce her femininity. She's willing to become something she's not just for the sake of power. Then I move on to paragraph number two. And she is deceptive, guys, because she is telling her husband, listen, my beautiful husband, you must behave like somebody you're not. She's a two-faced woman and she's teaching him how to be two-faced. Now, why did I zoom in to the adjective innocent? Because she could have said, look like a flower. A flower is innocent enough, but by adding the adjective innocent, it shows the, the height of her deception, the height of her being a two-faced character. Because being a flower is not enough. She emphasizes how you must act like you are a newborn baby. You must be completely perfect. And this is where I bring in the context because it presents Lady Macbeth as a character who goes against patriarchy. She's commanding her husband. She's telling her husband how to behave, what to do, what he needs to um, look out for. Macbeth at this point has given everything up to his wife. And therefore this character right now goes against patriarchy. So I've done paragraph one and paragraph two. Then I move on to this paragraph, guys, looking for an escape. Lady Macbeth, guys, when she's holding the candle in Act 5, Scene 1, in the stage direction, she juxtaposes who she is in the beginning of the play. In the beginning of the play, she is dark, she is evil. She is literally a walking, talking shadow. But now the light, the candle, juxtaposes it because the candle symbolizes the idea she's looking for hope she's looking for some kind of light in her life and this is where i talk about the idea of this being a stage direction why is it important that it's a stage direction it's important because in the stage direction we learn that she has to carry a light around with her why is it important she's carrying a light around Guys, she's almost afraid of being in the dark. Now, the dark doesn't mean she's a baby at home who hates the lights going off. The dark is the idea of evilness. The dark is the idea of her living with her guilt. She needs a fake light to, cuck, to almost override what she's done. That is why I chose those two. And in paragraph number three, so in paragraph number four, I said that she is consumed by her guilt. Out damn spot. She's swearing at this spot in her hand. And that is the use of personification. And I'm going to zoom in to the idea of it being a spot. But the spot is made up in her mind. Because it is a symbol of her guilt. Now why did I choose Freud and the superego as context here? Because Freud, if you guys know who he is, in the superego, he talks about the idea of how a person feels after they've committed an action some people feel guilty so i'm going to talk about how here how her mind is consumed by guilt and this is reflective by the super ego now if we zoom out for a plan for an essay this is the perfect plan guys what you see on the board honestly if i can pull it off is a fantastic plan for an english literature essay because it has all the ingredients that I need. It has all the AO1, it has all the AO2, it has all the AO3. All that I have to do now is write these paragraphs up in 10 minutes, which is definitely possible. Now, guys, for those of you who are going to try to do this at home, what I would do is this. <coughs> have this as your base plan. So you know, every paragraph, I do that, 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 that. Then think of your own question. How is Lady Macbeth presented? How is Romeo presented? How is Scrooge presented? How is Jekyll presented? Think of your own question. And then plan a question. Sorry, plan a full answer that looks like this. And get in the habit of doing the same thing over and over again. Paragraph 1, language, language. Paragraph 2, language, language, context. Paragraph 3, structure, form. Paragraph 4, Whatever you want, whatever you want, context. Do that for every essay because like a robot, you will then begin to tick off the mark scheme nice and easy. Now, guys, the next thing that's left is to eventually turn this plan into a paragraph. Always, guys, thank you for your support. 
Ich liebe es zu Everything English. Peace.